Hey guys, this is Rene, welcome back for another video on this channel and today I will talk about the Moving Average Day Breakout program again. Actually, it's not a day breakout program anymore because now it kind of trades retracements more. So uh, I should rename this at some point, but yeah, for now I think it's totally fine. Uh, let me demonstrate you the program real quick and then we, or I plan to show you how to add the take profit which I did not add in the last video. And also I want to give you the trailing stop loss option because um, yeah, some people ask for it and I like to make tutorials that you guys like and you guys really seem to like this um, gold trading program. So it's a win-win situation. Um, I think we can all agree on this. So yeah, let's do this. So uh, first of all, let me show you the program again. So you can see here, this is what the program does and it should do some trades at some point yeah there we are so you can see so far we have a program that uses a moving average um, yeah classical moving average by default I just added the 100 periods as you can see here in the daily chart and then the program takes trades as soon as um, yeah, if the price is above the moving average, we take buy trades. If it's below the moving average, we take sell trades. And then we wait for the daily candle to drop, like for a buy trade, for example, to drop a specific percentage here is 0.5. And then we enter in the direction of the moving average. So pretty simple, pretty straight, straightforward strategy. And Actually, in gold, this was performing kind of good in the first backtest that I did. I did some more tests then in some forex pairs like uh, US dollar, USD Japanese yen, GPS dollar. These are like my three most traded pairs. It, it did not work out that great. It was not like super bad, but it was not really super profitable. So I think you really need trending markets. And uh, gold is a perfect example for a usually a trending market that has also longer trends. So maybe you cannot trade this in every symbol, but some other people suggested to trade it in stocks or also in, um, uh, in, in index markets maybe where we could have longer trends. So yeah, these are just some ideas. So now let's have a look at the code. And let's have a look at the take profit and the trading stop. So I will again add this very quickly. If you need basic programming knowledge, check out the link in the video description where you find a complete course where I explain everything very slowly. So what I want to do here is I want to add the TP in percent. So of course, first of all, I want to uh, add this input variable here so the user is able to change this. And then in the main body, or in the body of the on tick function here. Yeah, you can see here like the on tick function is built like this. We check for a new bar. Actually, this is, I think, something that I did not show on YouTube. This is something that I added so my back tests run faster. Um, yeah, what this does is it pretty much make sure that everything is only calculated once per one minute bar. So at the beginning of a one minute bar, we check the entry condition. So this will make sure that your tests run a lot quicker, actually. And you could add this if you want to do some quick back tests. Also, I like to add this if I work with open, high, low, close uh, data anyways. But yeah, you can also take out uh, or take this uh, if statement here completely out of the on tick function and then you have the own uh, the old program which calculates on every single tick and not only on bar opens but yeah I will leave it in here for now because it really speeds up the back test then we calculate the moving average on a, a yeah daily chart or on whatever chart you use the time frame for using the handle calculate some prices for the last bar for the current bar get the closing time for the trades here we loop through the trades, check for the closing time, and if there is the need to close the position, we close it. And then here we reset this is position open um, variable because this will make sure that we can open new positions. And then if there is no position open on this specific day, we then search for the entry condition. And here we calculate the stop loss already. So what I do here is I will just 
add the code that will um, make sure that we also have a TP calculated. So the calculation is actually the same as for the stop loss, of course, just that for buy positions, we now add the TP percent on the entry price and for sell positions, <clears throat> we subtract it from the entry price. But this is just basic math. I think there's nothing really I can explain here. It's just the calculation of the TP and SL price. And then once you calculate this, of course, you also have to provide the variable that we created for this, which is this TP variable, to the buy function here and the, the sell function here. And if you write the comma here, you would see all the <coughs> requested parameter values in the requested order. So it's, it's, it's very simple and straightforward. So this is for the take profit. Now let's also have a look at the trailing stop. <clears throat> and there are two things we could do here. First of all, we could move this for loop out of this block, which would mean that it would be calculated on every single tick. We could also leave it in this block, which means that uh, this for loop is only calculated at the beginning of a new one minute bar. Leaving it in the block will of course speed up the backtest uh, by a huge amount, but moving it out of the if um, statement here would make sure that the trailing stop that we now add here in this for loop is calculated with every single tick. It's just personal preference. Um, yeah, for testing, I think it's fine to keep it inside of this if statement here. Uh, sorry, inside of this if statement, so the tests just run a lot quicker. But for live trading, I don't know, it's up to you. You might want to use it um, outside of this uh, if statement. So let's just um, create a very simple trading stop here, also based on um, percent, I would say. What I like to do is I like to use a, a TSL percent input then. <clears throat> In this case, we just define the distance from the current price. Um, yeah, where, where I want to trail this uh, stop loss. And then I like to have a, a TSA trigger in some way where I can say that I want to start trailing after 0.3% in profit, for example. This is a user input, of course, since we make it an input variable, so the user is able to change this. But these are maybe the default settings that I want to use. Also, if you want to use a <clears throat> TSA, you might want to use a bigger, uh, oh, sorry, not here, a bigger take profit um, or maybe no take profit at all. We can also have a look at this. So yeah, first of all, let's just create the trading stop calculation here. So I said already that I want to add it here in this for loop. Kind of makes sense to use the same for loop because in this for loop, we already search for positions of this specific expert advisor. So what we can do here is when we found this position, um, we can check if the position has to be closed. Yeah, well, let, let's just add it before this block here. So we just check if uh, position type uh, like this, if and this POS is still the C position info uh, object variable here. So we can use it to check the position type and want to check if it is position type uh, buy, so we're checking for buy positions, and if it's not a buy position, then of course it has to be a sell position, but um, yeah, I usually still make this second check here, position um, type sell, because it kind of makes it easier to read afterwards. I mean, we could just say else, would be kind of the same uh, the same output, I think, because there are only buy and sell positions. But I usually use the else if and then um, check the condition if it's a sell condition. Even if it's not really necessary, sorry, it makes it more readable, especially if this block here becomes very, very big. Then it's still easy to see that here we are checking for long positions, here we're checking for short positions. But yeah, so what do we want to do? First of all, we want to check if the current price hit the trigger already and here we could use the uh, the close price of the current bar which is essentially just the bid price but what i like to do is i like to work with the um, bid and ask price here because for sell positions i usually do my calculations for the trading stop on based on the ask price because the ask price is the price used 
for closing sell positions. So in my opinion, it doesn't really make sense to use the bid price here. So let's just get the bid and ask price here so we can work with it. And yeah, we will use, of course, the symbol info double function for this, for the current chart symbol. And then we can request the bid price here. And for the ask um, variable that I create here, we will just request the symbol ask price. And once we did this, we can now use it. So we check if this bid price is greater than the position price open, which is the open price of the current currently selected position, plus TSL trigger percent, or plus, ah, I forgot to add this, plus price open multiplied with TSL trigger percent divided by 100. This will just check if we are um, by a specific amount or more specific, the TSL trigger percent above the open price of this order. And if this is true, we can calculate the new stop loss. So I will just create a new variable for this. And we will say bit minus TSL or bit minus bit uh, multiplied with TSL percent divided by 100. And that's pretty much it. And then we can just check if SL is greater than position stop loss. And if this is the case, then we use the trade object here to, um, to modify the position. We use the position ticket, the new stop loss, and the old take profit. We can get all of the um, parameters of the currently selected position using this position um, uh, object variable here, which makes it very convenient and easy to work with. And then for sell positions, now, as I said, I want to use the ask price here. This is what I like to do. You can use the bid price if you like, but in my opinion, it doesn't make sense. And then um, we just check if the price dropped by the trigger percent here after the position was opened. And then we calculate the stop loss for the sell position. Whoops, Allah, what am I doing here? And here, of course, we want to calculate it based on the ask price, and we want to add the TSL percent on the ask price. And yeah, if we did the calculation, we check if this is smaller than the position stop loss. Also, for sell positions, you have to make sure that if the stop loss is zero of the open position, you still want to modify, because if, the, if there is no stop loss for the position, uh, or if it is zero, this can never be true. So, oh, sorry, not end. But or so you always have to check this condition too if you are working with trading stops for sell positions. But yeah, if you found a uh, stop loss that has to be modified, then we simply use the position modify function here, provide the new stop loss and the old take profit and everything. And if we compile it, we should now see that if I test the program again, that the trading stop is processed. So here, going back to the testing environment, we can see. We still have the same inputs, but now we also have the TP percent, the TSL percent, the TSL trigger percent. I would just go with the default settings for now and just give it a go. So what we want to check here is if we now do see the trailing stop added and if we do see the, uh, the take profit. So let me fast forward here. First thing we will see is of course um, the take profit, which is there immediately if the position is opened. And then we will also see the, um, the trading stop once the position goes into, into profit. So yeah, here is, um, I can show it on the daily bar again. This is the first signal, which is of course the same as in the last test because we didn't really change the signal itself. We just changed the position management. So let me just wait until it's here. So yeah, you can see here on the daily chart, it's better to see. There's the retracement in the daily bar. We are above the moving average. So this is a valid buy signal. So now we can see also on the one minute chart that there is a take profit. It's 1% away from the current price. Stop loss 0.5% away. So what happens if we go into profit? And yeah, there we are. We were like 0.3% in profit here, which was, I think, the trigger. So the, the stop loss is now 0.2% um, of the current uh, price below the price. And it should follow the price. Yeah, we were not really able to see it for this trade. But let's wait for another trade that is uh, that goes into profit a little bit more so we can actually see how this trading stop behaves. In this case, ah, shit, ah. I'm just, these trades happen so quickly and I forgot to, I uh, didn't, didn't find the right moment to stop it. 
Yeah, but I mean, like you can also test it on your own PC and we can see it here, like uh, position modify, position modify, the positions are modified. And yeah, here now I caught a position. So yeah, you can see the trading stop is modified um, with the beginning of every one minute um, uh, candle. There is uh, the, the calculation done and this can change the trailing stop then. And yeah, you can see we are just like securing some profits and of course we still have the chance to hit the take profit. So I don't know if this is beneficial for the strategy. This is something you have to test. The last thing that I want to do together with you in this tutorial is to really fast forward so we can see some sell trades. And I want to check if the trading stops also working for sell, sell positions. So, come on, give me the sell trades. Actually, in year 2023, I don't know if we do have a lot of sell signals because this was a very, very strong um, buy, buy trend in the, in the gold market. But yeah, now we seem to hit the moving average. And yeah, there we have the first sell positions. Let me yeah, let me go back to the one minute chart. It's easier to catch the positions here, I think. And there's a sell position going into profit. So I hope it can go into profit a little bit more. So we can see the trading stop, but I don't think I make it made a mistake here. So it should be working just fine. Still want to show it to you one one time here. And yeah, there is the trading stop. So yeah, everything seems to work just fine. We do not get every, any errors here. So yeah, this is how you can add the TP and the trading stop to this program. And now this should of course have an impact on the graph because now since we have the TP and the trading stop, it usually, it can provide some stability in the equity because you have more smaller profits compared to the previous system where we had a... Um, approach that can just generate big profits or a stop loss on a day pretty much. So this can provide more stability, but also make sure that you are a little bit careful with stops in gold market because especially uh, if there are news or during US Open, there can be a quick and uh, very dirty spikes in the gold market that can take out your stop loss or your trading stop and uh, also add a, add a huge amount of slippage, um, which will of course drag down your performance. But yeah, this is how you can add a simple uh, trading stop um, by adding it to this block and uh, how you can add the TP and stop loss or the TP just in this uh, video by adding it here and also adding the variable here. That's pretty much it. Also, I added, of course, the, uh, the variables for this up here. And that's these are pretty much all the changes that I did in this video. And yeah, I hope you liked it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Also, uh, what I asked for in the last video already, if you find some good settings for gold or for any other market, uh, feel free to post it in, as a comment below this video. I think it would, very, would be a great help for people that uh, use this program or that are testing this program right now so we can all like support each other, benefit a, a bit from the progress that others made. And yeah, we just help the help the community. So I hope you liked it. I'm out. Have a great time. Good trades. Bye.